power analysis and the analysis of power is a, a critical area for positioning ourselves and for beginning to think about how, as agencies, we can position ourselves. It has to be about a, a culture of understanding being developed, that analysis is not another tick box. And the problem with tools is that it tends to be, OK, you know, we've done this, we've done this, we've ticked that box, we've, done, we've ticked an analysis, we've used tool X, OK, we're up and running. Rather than an, an actually innate understanding of the context within which we're working. And I think without that, then we are headed for trouble. What do we want from an analysis? We want it to be regular and systematic. We want it to be shared and documented. We want it to, if possible, be predictive, have a 360 degree focus, and cover all levels. We want it to be clear about inherent assumptions and we wanted to identify root causes and emergent issues. So let's unpack that a little bit, perhaps, in terms of how we get there and what the dilemmas within that are, because there are many dilemmas within that, and just even getting the analysis. Regular and systematic. How regular is regular? Do you do your analysis when there's been a change on the ground? Do you do it every six months, or do you do it just before you're going to do your strategic plan? Or have you got a more ongoing analytic, uh, analytical system where you're actually gathering information at the community level, at the national level, and at the international level? And how do you get that information? Where, where gathering information in conflicts can itself be extremely dangerous. So how do you develop the relationship and I think one of the things about conflict, conflict is very much about re relationships. It's about relationships having broken down and conflict transformation is about the strengthening of relationships, of positive relationships and the building of positive relationships. And it's those relationships that you have are your information system. S shared and documented. Actually, everybody working in conflict daily does an analysis before they walk out the door if they're in a hot conflict area. How do you capture that? Because that's what you're trying to capture, is, is, is that sense of if it's life or death. And I think that um, within an organisation, it is about sharing information, which isn't often done very well. It's usually done in international organisations down the pub, by the group that go to the pub or do some information sharing afterwards. And, and that's where the real chat about the politics goes on, rather very often than in formal and analytical situations. And I think that uh, that sharing has its own problems. And the reason it happens down the pub or wherever, and maybe not in situ, is because of the point Peter made about the problems within the workplace. If you're in, if you're operating in a conflict country, your staff will presumably, you will have done your best to make sure your staff are representative of that society. That being the case, you have brought the conflict into the organisation through the front door. So how are you going to deal with that? And what are your tactics and strategies at the management level? for dealing with that given fact. Documented. Ooh, you can't write this stuff down. Who's going to get hold of it? So how do you communicate that to where it should be communicated? Be it your head office, whatever. But the other thing you need is a 360-degree analysis. And what I mean by that, you all know what 360-degree appraisals are, I guess. Um, so just transfer that thinking. You know, in a conflict, there are rarely just two parties, and there are many levels. Um, one may have one set of rebels. Usually one, may, one has more. But if one has one set of rebels and one government, then that's about as simple as it can get. 
but there are still neither the rebels nor the government are monoliths. So you have vertical differences within each, but you also have horizontal, because as we all know, governments are usually at the elite level in society. You've got the mid level and you've got the grassroots level, and they're being affected differently by any conflict. All of those groups will be affected totally differently. They will have a different experience, and they will have different priorities, and they will have different points of view. But it is the relationship between those which provides the dynamic of the conflict, because they're seeking within the conflict. All of those groups are seeking to make their space. They're seeking to achieve their immediate aims within that conflict. There are a lot of pitfalls, and I think being aware of the pitfalls is important. And I think it sounds very daunting, all of that. And people, you know, development workers are already running around with far too many things to do. Um, but this is actually brings together, in my view, the foundation for a rights-based approach. It brings together the, all the participation tools. And out of that, one can, if one plans for it, one can get quite a strong and sensitive and responsive analysis.